and it's Natalie here. Um, and it is a Friday night, uh, and I've just spent the whole, whoa, hello. Got a crazy dog. Um, I, anyway, I got the old PJs on, and um, anyway, the, today what I have is the Art of Love Tarot. Which, oh, ooh, hello. Hey, there's a little bookmark. Decent guidebook. I like the use of trees, and I've decided I can cope with angels. I think I didn't get it right away because of angels. Probably still getting over my Doreen Virtue stuff. Wow, this is a thick deck. This isn't even all of them. The box is pretty nice. Yeah, it's exactly what I would have expected based on all of the walkthroughs. Oh, it's beautiful. And, you know, like a lot of decks, it starts with nudes. <laughs> It's very reflective, this surface, and that's interesting. I've got, um, I've started doing the thing. Let's try this one, too. Nope. Ooh, that's harsh. Let me try one second. I did brighten it up in here and then, like, turn the glare away, and the way I do that is by... Um, putting my cell phone on the tripod and it just blocks it just enough that it's not completely obnoxious. A little bit of glare. Some glare. I know that's not what Maggie Smith sounds like, but so we've got I'm just gonna do my first impressions. Ooh, that magician. I love the colors. I love those like blue, those look like blue morpho butterflies and some kind of iris. I don't mind keywords on decks. I know they tend to give a lot of people the shits. Um, personally, I kind of like the keywords because it tells me where the author or the creator's going. Um, I love this high priestess. I love that, that void. Mm, okay. Beautiful. I, mean, I don't know what these pink butterflies are. Oh, wow. That is a very Jesus-looking emperor. Okay, I have to check the book because that is so... There's a lot of Jesus happening in there. So she says, The emperor guides potential energy into reality through inspired action. This process is symbolized by the loving pink and empowering gold star of conception. Hmm. Uh, as he closes his eyes, the emperor connects to the honesty and love of all. Oh my God, I love that. His living light flows comfortably and confidently through the seeds of creation to awaken their energy. He is at one with the God, or G-O-D, like abbreviated principle, which is stands for Grand Organizing Design. Beautiful. Okay, so we don't really say Jesus in there anywhere, but you know, it's not not Jesus either. Sure. So there's our hierophant. I love again that we've got a female hierophant here, and it looks like there's like roads being through through her eyes. Okay. Oh, hello. Look at these lovers. Wow. That is stunning. So that's the chariot. Oh. And these trees seem alive, like they're, they're human or they're people. I don't know this to be certain. I'm wondering if this is a found artwork deck, like if this is Tony Carmine Salerno's um, artwork that Denise Jarvie has arranged, or, hmm, this is beautiful. It says that early in 1998, she had gone into this, this art gallery and saw Tony Carmine Salerno's work. Okay, it then says uh, it was two years before I knew what the images stirred in me through the loving assistance of Tony's wife, Martine, and her magical teachings of Reiki and meditation, 
I gradually realized the feeling was unconditional love. So she'd had this incredible feeling that came up in her as a result of viewing Tony Carmine Salerno's work. Um, and then realized that's what it was. It had been so long since I had allowed myself to feel love that it took a little while to recognize it. A profound healing commenced the moment I walked into the Blue Angel. And I am eternally thankful. And this was the Blue Angel Gallery. Um... And I am eternally grateful to Tony for the opportunity to open this experience to others by combining his art with another great love of mine, the tarot. Tony generously encouraged me to enter the energy of each artwork, delve into its story, and let it show me how it aligns with traditional tarot meanings. It has been a beautiful, eye-opening process undertaken with great care and, of course, love, after all, love is what this deck is all about. May this deck inspire and love you just as it inspired and loved me. So I was feeling like, okay, I'm not sure that I feel like, the, I don't know, it's intuitive. I didn't, I felt like this, yeah, it just felt like in some ways some of this is just a little bit of a stretch, a little bit of a push. Um, it doesn't have that same collaborative um, feeling, but I get it. I totally get where where she's coming from. Okay, so the force or strength. Okay. Oh my gosh, the retreat. So that's the hermit. And it's Ayers Rock. Wow. I love that. I love that this has a uniquely Australian voice. I love that this is the wheel. Wow. I'm so excited to read the meanings behind all of these cards because like understanding what it gives me greater freedom in many respects to just interpret these in a way that feels intuitive. Um, because that's ultimately what, what the author of the book and the, you know, the person that, I guess, Denise, oh, Denise Jarvi, it, you know, has done here. So that is justice. Yeah, I can feel she had to stretch a lot here. Um, the turnaround. Wow, this looks a lot like the art on um, Tarot of the She. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is the, um, the Hanged Man. That looks like a Dakini. I just have to find out if that's a Dakini. Oh, it's Kali. Oh, wow. Okay. It's intended to be Kali. That is the gentlest and sweetest looking Kali I have ever seen. Yeah, I don't know what to think of that just yet. I like a good death card. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, okay. This is the Jesus. Here we go. That's kind of a, G a Buddha Jesus. Oh my God. God, I love that. Holy shit. I just had a little, I had a little breakthrough. <laughs> okay. So if this is temperance and this is about alchemy, this could be beautiful for healing wounds around, well, for someone who's a Buddhist and was raised Christian, you know, that alchemical mix that takes place through the combination of the two has been a big contributor to I don't know how I how I've managed to open up. Oh, there's DNA spiraling up there. Um, like some kind of a holy fire. Wow, that is so beautiful. Yeah, it's like Buddha Jesus. It's not quite a, a lotus in his hands, but you know, he's sitting in a lotus position. He's It's a Jesus with his right shoulder uncovered. Wow. There's a lot of depth in there. That is a very friendly devil for me. Yeah. It's like, wow, that, 
<laughs> most of my friends look like that. I, I really, I love it actually. That's that's not threatening. I mean, if you're going to read with with these for yourself or a client and you really have to address stuff, that's not so bad. Oh my God, I love this. Oh my God, I love this. The ego, the collapse. Yeah, I have chills all the way down the right side of my body, which is the hand that this is in. All the way down my legs. My foot is tingling. That is wild. Okay. Oh, oh my God. Favorite card in the deck so far. I love this. Love this. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, the star. Very simple. Oh, these are, I like these. I like these cards. Very simple. The moon. Yeah. Let's see, there's nothing in here that tells me about illusion. Oh, no. This is, I think it's the, it's the dissonance between the meaning, you know, the card title, the meaning, and then looking at the the images, I'm not seeing the collab, you know, the collaboration for me is not there. So there's a certain amount of like, um, you know, the writer or the, the deck compiler putting, putting their own take on it. Um, it's not kind of arising organically through collaborative um, vision. The sun, vital. I see vitality in there. It definitely feels vita vital. Oh, wow. That's stunning. Yes, I get that. Yeah, that is totally judgment. Some of these are not a stretch. I mean, really not at all even remotely a stretch. This is totally perfect. I love that. The universe. I like the judicious, you know, use of, of Eastern and Western images in here. That really is beautiful. Oh, good. We're going to get the angels right away. So the ace of angels. So I think angels are swords. Yeah, it would seem like it. Two of angels is balance. Oops. But we've got heads there. And interestingly, hearts as well. You know, that head, heart, you know, mind, m mind, emotion, or brain, emotions, connection that's there, mind, heart, etc. Wow, it's been a long day. Let's just make sure that I'm, I got this right. I'm pretty sure that the angels are swords. Okay, yeah, they're swords. That's, I mean, intuitively that makes sense. Three of angels is clarification. So we're not getting a, a hard, hardcore sword, you know, RWS swordy, soul busca inspired swords here. Four of angels rest. Beautiful. Five of angels withdraw. Yeah, I see that her attention is focused inward and is, and you know, her she's back in the space you know backward yeah it's subtle but it's there six of angels is a transition nice seven of angels progress yeah okay Love, I mean, I tend to love creators that, that are willing to take those risks, actually. But I also, I don't know, I realize as I watch this, there are so many different aspects. I really kind of feel a need to have click into place in order for me to fully buy it. Um, I went back and just pulled out the moon because there's some correspondence here for me that, you know, in parody here that, woo, here we go that really makes these come together for me, right? Confusion and illusion look very similar. I'm sure De um, Denise Jarvie was, was intentionally connecting those. That's, that feels right uh, to me, honestly, but that helps actually, because I see like how she is, 
at least conceptualizing and, you know, engaging that swordsy function and, you know, in how she's pulling these together. Okay, nine. Guardian. Nice. I like that. So even though you're having that nine of swords moment where all of those swords are back there, you're not alone with it. Beautiful. Oh, holy shit. Here we go. Ten of angels. Surrender. Yeah. Yeah. Your life is not what you think it is anymore. Okay, the page of angels. Mysticism. Lovely. I wonder what the blue morpho symbolizes to Tony Carmine Salerno. Because I'm seeing it a lot in his artwork. Kind of want to know. Okay, knight of angels. Watcher. Queen of Angels, Visionary. Wow. Fascinating choice for the Queen of Swords. Wow. Okay. Okay, I could buy it. King of Angels, Peaceful Warrior. Wow. He's not quite old enough to be a king. I, when I think of the King of Swords or Kings and Decks, I think of older men. And this reads a little bit like Brad Pitt. <laughs> Looks a little bit like a couple of the theater students I've had over the years. So Ace of Hearts. So these will be cups. Beautiful. I love the way that she's chosen these aces. So without knowing this could easily be a star and i feel you know again like when a when a deck is intentionally created as a tarot um those are not details that those are details that are taken into consideration right it's still i love it it's still gorgeous i appreciate all of this two of hearts union almost exactly identical to the lovers it's the same models and like I feel like I'm looking at an oil painting and a sketchbook slash um you know pastels image you know artists do this a lot they work with the same images the same uh, models etc and do multiple versions of a picture. And I'm sure this was an intentional choice on um, Denise's part too. And there is a connection there between those cards. Three of hearts, joy. Oh my God, I love this so much. I love trees. So also I'm really excited that there's a lot of trees in this deck as well. Oh my God, I love that so much. I want to marry it. Oh, mm, hello, darling. Oh my god, that's perfect. Four of hearts is depression. Yeah. I get it. Wow, look at that. Like, it, it mirrors that, um, the four of cups card. But in reverse, in a weird way. Wow, that's really cool. I love those kinds of clever things. And she would have picked up on that detail. Beautiful. Five of hearts, sorrow. Uh, six of hearts, the past. And there are six hearts in there all together. That's interesting. Okay. Whoa, I love this. Seven of Hearts choices. And the Seven of Hearts asks you to use your intuition in order to make them, to tap in. I've seen a lot of six or seven of cups cards that are similar to this one. Apparition deck rings a bell. It has a similar. Oh, lovely. Oh my God, this is brilliant. Okay. Whoops, excuse me. Um, Eight of Hearts, Codependency. 
Oh my gosh, yeah. I love the way that we're looking too here at specifically at love, right? Or the concept of love and relationships and interbeing. That's a good one. I like it. I dig it. I dig where she's going here. Oh, wow. Nine of hearts. Stability. Mm. God, that's good. I love that. Ooh, Ten of Hearts. That's dark and wonderful. Culmination. Hmm. Interesting. There is a, a very interesting... Um, connection created here. Probably it should be more like this. Um, because this one is confusion, right? We've got illusion here coming with this one, but this one is culmination. So there's a wisdom that's happened through the heart that was missing when things were activated only through the mind um, when dealing with this concept. Years and years of my life as as a theater creator collaborating with other artists guys. That's just that's all it is um, It's just how I look at the world, okay. Oh, here we go page of hearts Innocence, oh my god, I love that look at the fishies They're so sweet Oh, such, I mean, I feel like that's what a lot of trees look like. And I have seen fish in the air and coming out of bushes. And I mean, I was a tiny child when I saw that. Um, probably a toddler. But that it has a real, a real, well, and it's innocence. Wow. Instant connection with this. Wow. Oh my God. Who knew? Okay, Knight of Hearts. Romance. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's, well, okay. I've been, I've just so, little interjection here to explain where my brain is. When men get Alzheimer's, it frequently will result in them thinking about sex and talking about sex and making um, sexual references in ways that in normal life they would never have done. Um, so this is just a preface where I'm coming from. So the Knight of Hearts is all about romance is holding his heart at crotch level. Um, okay, we've got to just see if this is even acknowledged or delved into even in the least little bit. The Knight of Hearts inspires romance. Someone will stir and arouse your sensuality, enliven you with the desire to let go to love and dare you to chase happiness beyond anything you have ever experienced. Uh, this encounter will be instrumental in reshaping your view about love and life. A mind-blowing experience will free your heart from self-imposed protection. Have fun with this person. Enjoy the deliciousness of each moment, but have no expectations. This person, idea, or energy may leave as quickly as it arrives. However, the value of this experience is not in its, in its permanence. Your heart has opened to the wonderment of love. Move toward your desires. Wow. I mean, that's actually a very powerful description and meaning for this. Um, and given, you know, given the way I'm watching uh, Tony Carmine Salerno, um, use images of, you know, of sexuality and sensuality uh, in his images. That makes sense. I mean, this, yeah, I see that there's an attempt at elevating sensuality to the level of love um, and raising its, raising its vibrational possibility. That's actually, that's wonderful. I love that. Um, yeah, like I said, my mind and my brain are addled just a little bit. Bye. Being with my um with my beloved client, Queen of Hearts, Sixth Sense. 
Oh, wow, he's back again, but this time as the King of Hearts. Um, let's find Brad Pitt again. I really feel like this is, these are the same models. Oops, from a different angle, yeah. Same models, different angle, different lighting. And see, when an artist knows that they're creating a tarot deck um, and working specifically to create these images, it's just done very differently because you would know not to use the same model. But if an artist is working, you know, to create, they're just working with a model that they connect with that inspires their work, that's a different discussion. Uh, oh my God, I love it. And there's writing in the background. I love that. Oh my God. Everything about this tree. Everything. Everything. I love you. I love you. And you know I'm going to take a picture of this and blow it up so that I can read the words because I'm so curious about what it says. Sorry. It reminds me a little bit, a little bit of Amy Chase's work. I think this would read beautifully with Amy Chase's deck, actually. The colors and the, I mean, there's, there's a lot here that would work well. Oh my God, I love that. Mmm. And to see those trees, you really have to get distance. But they're so, the image like draws them together as like one entity because of the, the light and the way that they're linked by it and by the shadow, or you know, the background and the use of shadow. These are stunning, wow. And he's clearly used a lot of different media to create some of these. They're all very different media from one another. Um, crap, I'm taking these in without even thinking about what they are. <laughs> cool, look at these. What are we looking at? What am I seeing? Oh, okay, okay, so this is the Two of Wands. That's an interesting choice, growth for uh, the Four of Wands or Four of Trees. Obviously, when I come into a new deck, I want to like it. I want to work with it. I get them because I'm interested in working with them, and I want to know and understand their voices. Holy shit, that is incredible. Um... God, the... Contemplation. Seven of Wands. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stretching here. There's, I mean, for an RWS-based RWS um, deck. Okay, so, all right. So this was Contemplation. Wait a minute. These are not Wands. All right, okay, yep, yep, yep. That's because these have got to be pentacles. That's what we're looking at. That is the journey we're looking at. That is, to, this makes sense as a two of pence. This makes sense as a three of pence. Five totally makes sense. Five of pentacles. Oops, and so does this four of pence. Oh my God, when you look at it from that perspective. Oh God, totally different. <laughs> totally different discussion that makes total sense total sense yep and this eight of trees if we're talking about love where am i yeah no here this overlapping and the way of interrelating with one another is about skill to create that energy between the two people. Okay, I get it. I'm sorry, guys. Wow. Nine of trees, refinement. God, that's stunning. We've got yet another moon image here. 
And I feel like there's got to be something linking these on some conscious level. And my knowledge of esoteric um, doodahs is not following me right now. But it's, there's definitely something there. Alignment, culmination. Oh, yeah. God, look at that. Look at the parody. I wonder if there's one in the, in the next suit. I mean, the numbers. So we could see it this way, that we've got confusion, refinement, and culmination. Or, well, I mean, they would, well, this is the art of the tarot, right? Because in any form, you know, in any order, these cards will make a completely different story about someone's journey. Oh, my God, that's freaking brilliant. Oh, my God, I love this. Loyalty. So that's how I feel about my trees. Oh, I love that. Oh my God, I love that. Oh, love this one. Oh God, that's stunning. The art in this deck is to die for. The Knight of Trees, Custodian. Similar feel to the Knight of um, Discs in the Marielle with meaning. Like there's a Buddha under a tree. You know, it's a baby, little boy Buddha. And this guy is, this this knight is, is the custodian of his own heart and of the environment around him. Queen of Trees, Nurturer. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. There's so much you could say about that. Like the way that the tree grows over and around her and through her. And she's providing the space for it to grow in and out of her. And then through the process of doing that, identity is either merged or lost. So we get both the shadow and the light in one. Oh. God, wow. And then the king of trees who has learned how to allow that energy to merge without, without it overcoming him or losing any sense of identity. Like embracing the tree as part of who and what he is. Here's possible here. Ooh, look at this. Here's another ace. I love that. The fire of creation. Two of stars. So this is the two of wands. Bold, boldness. Yeah. Oh, that's very tarot of the spirit. Yeah. Diversity. I'm just going to have to read the book. Um, Six of Stars. Wow, that's a different period in his career. And he definitely likes this model as an angel. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I get it, as Eight of Wands. I like that there's some stillness in it, though. Sometimes the Eight of Wands can like be out of so out of control, and that's got. St I like the stillness. Okay, Nine of Stars, Perseverance. Wow. That yeah, that's totally. That resonates with me as a Nine of Wands. Oh my gosh, my heels are like up off the floor, and I'm ready to leap. Um, who take a breath, Nat? There we go. Ten of Stars. What hoarding? Of course. Oh my gosh, of course. 
Page of Stars Curiosity. Yep, another mo same model here, but this time is a knight. Perfect. I love this. Queen of Stars. God, so many different periods in this artist's work. It's so interesting. Um, and then finally, King of Stars. And this I love because it's almost not clear whether we're looking at a male or a female. And I really like that. Oh, fascinating. So, all right. This is probably very long. Yes, it is. Thank God for editing, guys. All right. Oh, a nice shuffle. If you can get your hands around the deck, and it would trim easily, I'm thinking, beautifully, in fact, on the sides. This is lovely. All right, folks. Thank you so much for, for sitting with me through this. <laughs> Hopefully I will have edited it right down. Um, okay, I will talk with you again soon. Bye.